Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. Well, the world of electric trucks is coming at us fast, and here's the latest addition, the all new 2024 Chevy Silverado EV. Now in this video, we are going to test this thing in every way that we know how. We're gonna tow a trailer with it, we're gonna drive on the highway, do a bit of super cruising, I'm gonna climb into it, show you all the features, and then we're gonna decide, is this the best electric truck on the market? Let's jump into it right now. Let's start by going over the numbers, and they are pretty impressive. So this is the RST First Edition. You have to know that because the numbers do change depending on the trim you get. Well, for this truck, we have an overall driving range of 440 miles, and it can support 350 kilowatt DC fast charging. Now, if you can find one of those chargers, General Motors says you can recoup 100 miles of range in just 10 minutes of charging between 10% and 90% of overall charge. Now the next impressive number, horsepower, 754 of them, and this truck will make the jump from zero to 60 in less than four and a half seconds. Let's talk towing and payload. So I like to check on the door jam sticker for the payload and GM still has the best towing sticker in the industry. It tells you your VIN specific payload and tow numbers. So payload here, 1,547 pounds. Tow rating is 10,000 pounds. This truck, as it sits, weighs 8,953 pounds, so it is pretty heavy. Looking at the business end of the truck, this is the only box you're going to get. There's no different lengths, and we get Chevy's multi-flex tailgate, so you can open just your little gate or open the big gate and then pop the little one, and that comes down and makes an excellent step to get up into your bed. Now this bed has a floor length of 5 foot 11, so a little bit bigger than what you're going to find in a lot of short bed trucks. And then it has a party trick, the mid gate. That entire wall folds down and you can uh, stretch your floor length out to 10 feet 10 inches. And the 10 foot 10 number is load stop to load stop up there. So if you use that mid gate, yeah, you can really haul some long things with your Silverado EV. Now the other party trick here in the bed, quite a bit of power that you can utilize. So we have three plugs, one of which is a 240 volt plug, which can put out up to 7.2 kilowatts of power. So if you wanna drag your uh, dryer outside and dry some clothes, you can do that. Or maybe more realistically, you wanna put a welder in the back of your truck and run it off the 240, you can do that too. Too. and there's a plug up there in the front in what Chevy calls the e-trunk. I would just call it a regular trunk, but they had to put a special name on it. But yes, there's also a plug up there and plugs in the cab so you can really access your power from all around this truck. That's really about it now for features. Why don't we jump in and go for a drive? And now folks, we're hitting the road in the Silverado EV. And uh, right now we actually have a over 5,000 pound box trailer on the back about 16 feet long. So, you know, about half of the truck's capacity. But the one thing with any high-sided trailer is aerodynamics come into play too. So that's always a bit of a better test, frankly, for a truck than say a flat deck trailer or something like that. And just come through this roundabout here. I'm gonna put my foot to the floor and just feel the power. Really nice. I mean, typical EV, it's that smooth power delivery. It just comes on in this wave and absolutely jumps up to speed. Silverado EV here does make some pretty cool spaceship noises. Luckily, you can go in and you can adjust how much noise you want pumped into the cab. Um, you could have no noise whatsoever or you could make it even louder. So that is the choice. But yes, it definitely sounds like a spaceship when you put your foot into it. But yeah, that acceleration, with 5,000 pounds on the back, you can't compare it to an ICE engine. Would a big V8 have pulled this as quickly? Sure, but it would have done it with a lot more drama, with a lot, you know, 
big shifts coming through the transmission and of course high RPM and the, all the noise that comes along with it. So it's just such a different experience and I would call it just such a more relaxed experience towing and especially accelerating with an electric truck. And now we're at speed, we're moving along here at 55 miles per hour and uh, no problem whatsoever in terms of the dynamics. Now again, I know this isn't pushing us for the weight, but still I can barely feel the trailer back there and that is a good thing. Now a part of that equation is actually the rear wheel steering in this truck. So when there's no trailer connected at parking lot speeds, you absolutely feel rear wheel steering. Um, you just feel like the back end of the truck is just stepping out a little bit to help you rotate around corners. It really does pronounce itself. But then I was talking to the engineers and they told me about how the rear wheel steering is acting a little bit differently in tow haul mode once there is a trailer connected. And essentially it's not being reactive, it's being proactive. So it is watching the steering control, the yaw of the truck, and then working to keep this truck as straight as it can to eliminate any trailer sway. So trailer sway control has been around for a long time on modern vehicles, but generally it would just use the ABS and the braking system, whereas because this truck has the rear wheel steering, it can actually counteract those forces with a little bit of rear end input. So I think that's just another thing that's adding confidence to this drive. And I mean, yeah, look, you know, hands off the wheel, the thing is just dead straight and dead flat. Now, the next part of that equation is the weight of this truck. Again, about 9,000 pounds this thing weighs. And that equals a good towing experience because the tow vehicle is so planted. It's, it's kind of counterintuitive because the more weight you take out of your tow vehicle, generally the higher payload and higher tow rating you're going to get. That was kind of the philosophy with say the F-150 when it went to the aluminum body. They went aluminum body, the tow rating jumped, but the truck got a lot lighter. And right away I said, you know what, I understand on paper that works, but in practice, in the real world, if you have a lighter tow vehicle, it's going to get pushed around more by the trailer. So that's what I'm feeling here because because this thing is so heavy, so planted, it's got the even weight distribution, the battery is down low, so the center of gravity is quite low. It just feels like even if it was a windy day and the trailer was blowing around a little bit, it would not affect the steering, the dynamics of the truck at all. And that's why, you know, towing with an electric truck it's such a good experience because you're getting that combination of the electric torque, the way it's delivered, 100% of the torque down low, plus then you get the weight, the center of gravity. It all comes together to honestly make one of the most sort of calm, peaceful towing experiences that I think I've ever had. And, and I am talking kind of generally about electric trucks, but especially here in this Silverado because of things like the rear wheel steering, yeah, I don't think you'd have any issue. Even if you were pulling up to the 10,000 pound mark, of course you might want to get in the uh, weight equalizing hitch. But outside of that, I think this thing will tow that 10,000 pounds without any issues whatsoever. And you know what? I actually also had the chance to tow with a work truck, what they call a 3WT trim truck. Now that wasn't here in Michigan, that was back home in Oshawa, but let's roll that clip now and I can talk to you about towing in that thing. And now folks, we have a treat for you. This is our first time in the Chevy Silverado EV. We're here in the 4WT, that's the four work truck. This thing has over 700 kilometers of range, over 600 horsepower. The numbers here are incredible, but numbers aside, you know, I just wanna feel it. We have uh, extensively tested the Ford F-150 Lightning. That's my personal uh, experiences in EV trucks have mostly been in the Lightning. So I'm gonna try and uh, compare it to that. I have it in tow haul mode or in trailering mode. We're here on the GM test track. I'm gonna floor it and I have a 5,000 pound trailer on the back. Tow rating here is 10,000 pounds, so we're half of the rating. Here we go. Nice, okay, so I've been driving it not in trailering mode for a while and now it is. 
it definitely hits harder when you're in trailering mode and that was one of my questions because generally tow haul mode is changing your shift points changing the rpm mapping uh, but of course none of that exists here in this EV. So what they told me essentially is trailering mode, yeah, just allows a little bit more energy into those motors to get you up and moving. Now I will say that it doesn't hit as hard off the line as the F-150 Lightning. There isn't quite as much torque being delivered right away. And I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing. The Lightning is frankly maybe a little bit of overkill. That thing is so quick off the line, but of course, every time you take off that quickly, you're sacrificing your range. And I think all the brands talk about this, but GM today has just keep, they keep on harping on the fact that the range numbers that they put out, they want them to be accurate. Actually, they want to under promise and over deliver on those range estimates. And in practice, I can feel them doing that based on how this thing accelerates. I'm not going to call it slow because it still feels pretty darn quick, most EVs do, but it just, it, it's obvious that that tuning off the line is maximizing the power without putting too much into the truck. So that's the first thing I noticed. Um, yeah, we're here on an internal test track. I only have about 10 minutes to test this out, so I can't test the range for you. As soon as we get one, uh, you know, back home, I absolutely will. I can pull up our energy usage numbers here, though. It's saying we're averaging 2.7 kilometers per kilowatt hour which is interesting and of course there's just different numbers now that you have to get used to there's no miles per gallon liters per hundred kilometers none of those things apply anymore and then within energy usage and all evs do this it tells you what's using the energy is it the climate control that's using the energy is it actually driving down the road that's using the energy so i appreciate that too because again in a vehicle like this especially when you know using air conditioning for example is really going to suck down on your range well you want to be aware of how your energy is being used so that's something that's common in evs but still i like to see it here in the truck i know that range anxiety is an issue when towing i know that towing is going to cut your range usually in half but outside of that experience and the charging experience pulling a trailer with this silver auto ev um, it's just honestly more confidence inspiring, I would say, than pulling a trailer with an equivalent gas-powered pickup truck. So there's still some hurdles that they have to clear. You know, charging stations meant for trailers is the first big one in my mind. They need to build more pull-through chargers where they have a lot more space. But yeah, that is all coming. We're still early days, even though we're into this thing now for a number of years. We're still in early days. Once the infrastructure gets better, that will solve the other half of the equation, but the actual vehicles themselves for towing, for doing hard work, feel so good. So back here in the RST, and one of the biggest differences between that 3WT and this truck that I drove is the power delivery. The 3WT just doesn't come on as quickly, not as aggressively, it doesn't hit as hard down low, whereas this RST, yeah, the power really does come on as a punch. And you know what, especially when you activate wide open watts mode yes that is wow mode and uh, we got a chance to run the truck in wow mode as well you can see it here okay folks we're in wow mode zero to 60 in uh, under four and a half seconds let's feel it <laughs> Yeah, wow, wow is a fair uh, description. Again, especially for a vehicle that's so heavy and you feel the weight behind you, just jumping up to speed like that is, uh, is fairly ridiculous. Now I will say I did feel sort of halfway down there, you know, between 50 and 60 miles an hour at full throttle. The steering wheel was pulling a little bit one way or the other. You really did have to drive it a little bit, but in terms of the acceleration, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite incredible. Certainly feels like it's in that four second range for sure. 
My last word on towing, I do have to mention, we do have all of the towing tech you'd like here. There is an integrated trailer brake controller. You are getting trailer profiles so you can save, for instance, your trailer brake gain and make sure that it's pulled up next time you hook the trailer up. And you have the automatic light check, so it'll check your lights for you and it'll flash your lights so you can check them yourselves. Plus the gross combined weight alert. So this thing will actually use essentially torque that is placed onto the motor as it can feel the load and and then using that, it can extrapolate whether or not you're overweight. That's something that the internal combustion trucks do as well, and it's here too. So yes, all the technology you want for towing is also here. Now, my very last word is to just mention uh, driving empty, because I did that quite a bit today too. The truck is comfortable. It still has that planted feeling, like I mentioned. I think the one thing that pronounced itself to me were the 24 inch wheels. You're getting massive wheels, small sidewalls, cruising on a flat interstate, it feels okay. The second you get onto secondary roads or roads around Detroit that we were on with a bunch of broken pavement, the wheels tend to hit kind of hard and feel sort of stiff. So there is definitely a downside moving up to those big 24s. And we drove a work truck that had smaller wheels on it, 18s I believe, they might have even been 20s, but it was a noticeable difference. They just didn't have that hard jarring hit when you went through sort of the broken pavement stuff. However, for the most part, I will still say it is a comfortable ride, but yeah, the tires and the wheels do pronounce themselves. Let's look a little bit more inside this truck now. So again, what we're in here, RST first edition. This is top of the line, fully loaded, 17.7 inch screen here in the center stack, a little over 11 inch digital gauge cluster up here. I also have a full head up display. So you're getting all of that technology that you could want. And then when it comes to the interior appointments here in the RST, it's supposed to be you know the sporty trim. So we're getting the kind of red and blue stitching. The dash is sort of covered in more of a material with some texture to it than just being straight plastic. I don't necessarily dislike it, but here's sort of one of my first big complaints in this review. I do feel like if this is your top trim truck, and you know, in Canada you're asking over $110,000, in the States you're asking about $95,000. I actually feel like this interior is a little bit plain and maybe it's just because I'm spoiled you know I just got out of a Sierra Denali Ultimate but these days these top trim luxury trucks are so gorgeous the seats are so comfortable and then I got in here and just felt like yeah the interior they could have gone a little bit further if you really wanted this to be your first kind of wow moment to impress everyone in the industry I just think there's too much black plastic too many plain surfaces yeah, the interior could have gone a little bit further. Of course, you know what? I will admit though, this is obviously subjective. This is just what I'm feeling about the interior. So please take a look at it here and uh, weigh in in the comments. Do you think this interior looks like it's uh, worth the price tag? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Now talking about the functionality of the interior, everything in here is great. First of all, we get this reconfigurable center storage down here. So the cup holders slide back or forward depending on where you want them. You can open up this lid right here and get access to the storage down there. You can hide the cup holders fully. I like having options because it depends on what you want to put in there. Is it a computer, a laptop, a cooler, a purse? These are all different size things. So it's nice to be able to yeah switch it up for whatever works best for you. Now the other thing in the interior which is interesting to me is here in the RST first edition you have to get this fully glass roof and no it doesn't open it's not a sunroof and there is no shade you cannot actually cover it up so you just have the full glass roof at all times. Now it is heavily tinted I will say that but again to me I just think you should have the option to be able to close it if you don't want it the sun, and it is a pretty hot day today, the sun, you feel it when you're sitting inside. It's not blazing hot, but it's definitely there. So that's one thing I would have uh, expected is to have the option to maybe roll a sunshade back, but GM didn't do that. So again, that's gonna be up to your own personal preference. And if you don't go for this, if you go for one of the work trucks, well then you don't get the glass roof. So 
that's going to be up to you. Now, the next thing I got to tell you about is the back seat. It is absolutely massive. I fit back there behind my driving position with tons of space to spare. So that's something you're not going to have to worry about is getting in and out of the back seat, hauling full size adults. Everybody is going to fit in this truck. And again, that's what most trucks prioritize these days. That's why we've ended up where we are, where a lot of trucks come with a short bed and a big cab, and that's the only way you can get it. That's the same here as the Silverado EV. There's no other cab or bed options. This is the only way you can get it. And it does definitely prioritize having space inside over having a longer bed. But again, the cool thing here is the mid gauge. Chevy has their own solution to sort of offer you that flexibility. If you wanna haul long stuff, you can. You just gotta give up your back seat. Still, I like having those choices. More choice is always better. Another electric vehicle feature that is here is one pedal drive. Essentially, the moment you lift off the gas pedal, the vehicle uses its regenerative braking to slow you down right away. So the idea is when you're approaching a light or a stop sign, you just start to lift off, it starts to slow down, and technically you would actually never need to use your brake pedal. Now, don't get me wrong, I am a fan of one pedal drive, especially once you get used to it, but I also think that coasting, you know, when you have one pedal drive on, you never coast. Whereas I think coasting can still be a more efficient way of driving. If I'm not planning to slow down, coasting actually makes the most sense because you keep your momentum rather than slowing down and having to speed back up and you know use that power that you just scrub back from the brakes. So here in the Chevy, you have regular one pedal, a high one pedal, which essentially is more aggressive. But then what I really like is there's a paddle shifter over here at my left hand. So I, what I've been doing today is leaving one pedal drive off so that I'm able to coast like I'm used to, like I like. But then as I'm coming somewhere where I know I have to stop, you can grab this paddle over here and bring yourself to a stop using the regenerative brakes. And my favorite part about it, it is pressure sensitive, kind of like a brake pedal. If you grab grab it really hard, the truck slows down really hard. If you grab it soft, the truck slows down soft. And it's a little finicky because it's not a lot of travel in there, but once you get good at it, yeah, you're essentially braking the truck just using your left hand and you can become very smooth with it. So you're coming up to a slop and you just slow down essentially like normal. You know what, I keep saying this, but I have to say it again, more choice is always better. If you don't like one pedal like me and you'd rather just do it this way, well, you have have the option to do that. So yes, having sort of the regen on demand over here with this left paddle, I think is a brilliant solution. Chevy's not the only brand to do this, but this is sort of the best implementation I've seen of it, especially because you know of that pressure sensitivity. So I've been appreciating that. And when you use it, the brake lights do come on. That is something that every EV should do. I believe most of them do, but it's still worth noting that yes, when you're you, anytime the vehicle is decelerating, the brake lights should come on, and here in the Silverado, they do. Of course, the next natural question, especially when towing a trailer, is you know how is the efficiency affected? Well, driving empty today, I was regularly seeing two miles per kilowatt hour, and now I'm in this RST, which has been towing for basically the entire day. It's running about 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour and again the trailer does have high sides but it's not all that heavy so uh, yeah we did lose about a quarter of our range if the trailer gets heavier bigger longer easily you could lose up to half your range and that's still one of the biggest downsides to towing with an electric truck all of the actual kind of physical attributes are here to make it such a good towing experience but if you have to stop and charge for let's say 40 minutes plus every 200 miles or less, yeah, going a long, long distance still will be annoying. Now, I think we're getting better. The ranges are going up. There's being a lot more attention paid by automakers to charging stations. Pull through charging stations are becoming a thing. I did also notice that on this truck, the charging port is on the rear quarter panel, which means you're gonna have to back into a charger. Of course, with a trailer on, that's basically not possible. So if you have to back in, you're gonna have to go disconnect your trailer. So those pain points absolutely still exist and the automakers are aware of it. And they're hoping, especially with public infrastructure, as it keeps on changing and evolving, that slowly but surely we get to more of a parody just when it comes to lifestyle with the gas truck. Now you may have noticed another thing, 
hands-free. We are actually super cruising right now as well. Uh, super cruise, of course, rolled out on interstates and major highways, but now it's coming to secondary roads. This is, uh, what is this called? Highway 52 here in Michigan, just outside of Ann Arbor. And it's not even a divided highway. I have traffic right there on the left of me. And so far, Super Cruise is doing a great job. Now, I've Super Cruised with the trailer on quite a bit now, and I think my biggest uh, pro about it is just the way it actually steers the vehicle. You know, I was always taught when towing, shout out to dad, a slow inputs. Everything needs to be slow and cautious and measured. If you put sharp inputs into a vehicle with the trailer on, you're going to mess up the weight distribution and you can, you know, get into trouble really quickly. And that's what I feel from Super Cruise with the trailer that as it's coming around corners, as it's navigating the road, everything is this nice, slow, calm input. And that then provides confidence to me and makes me feel better about allowing it to just, yeah, drive itself uh, while I pay attention. So Super Cruising with the trailer on, so far, I'm actually a big fan of the system, and it has to be said that as of today, this is the only brand that will allow you to go hands-free when you have a trailer hooked up. So uh, yeah, that is a unique technology to General Motors, and on especially a long road trip, it's going to take some of the stress out of the drive. Well, folks, we are coming to the end of this video. Now, look, electric vehicles in general, but especially electric trucks, we're still early days, but it's feeling like we are making strides. We are making steps to make sure that these vehicles, when you go from an internal combustion engine over to an EV, there's not a ton of pain points. Getting that longer range, 440 miles, even 450 on some of these trims, that just makes this more desirable, and it means that you have to change your lifestyle less and General Motors understands that a lot of people don't want to go to EVs because of all of those pain points so they are working on them for sure now when it comes to actually doing truck stuff hauling and towing this thing is excellent the torque from the motors is epic and then having all that weight down low just gives you that planted feeling so yes actually going out on the road it feels incredible once we get more and better public charging that's when I think electric trucks especially especially when you're towing a trailer, will really become a viable solution where you can go from your old truck to your new electric truck and not change your lifestyle one bit. We're not quite there yet, but we are getting there and this truck is helping us. So you know what folks, like I said, that's it for this one. Please now, I need to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Do you like electric trucks? Do you like the Silverado? Do you like the way it looks? I wanna hear everything you have to say about it. So drop into the comments right now and let me know. Oh yeah, and while you're down there leaving that comment, don't forget to hit that like button hit subscribe hit the notification bell so you never miss a truck king video heck hit the join button become a member of our channel and then come right back here to truck king to see what we're testing next